I would like to thank the program committee for the invitation to speak today. I have no conflicts of interest to report. <clears throat> the term chronic aortic aneurysm certainly applies to those aneurysms that one has been following with serial imaging. But in reality, whether an aneurysm is known for years or just recently identified, the answers to the question of, quote, when to operate are the same. Big picture, operation is indicated when the risk of an aortic event, such as rupture or dissection, exceeds the risk of surgical intervention. And current guidelines from both the US and European investigators are based largely on aortic diameter. It is the most studied parameter, and while not perfect, the data and the number of studies supporting diameter as a reasonable number far exceeds that of other index measurements that have been proposed. However, data from the International Registry of Aortic Dissection demonstrated that upwards of 60% of all aortic dissections occurred at diameters less than 5.5 centimeters, and as such, a myriad of alternative measurements have been proposed with studies ongoing to validate their effectiveness, and some of them are listed here, aortic size index, aortic height index, etc. So what are the current guidelines for intervention on the ascending aorta? Well, the 2010 ACC AHA AATS guidelines suggest 5.5 centimeters as a diameter indicating the need for intervention in patients without known genetically triggered aneurysms. For those being followed over time, growth of five millimeters or more <clears throat> per year indicates a more unstable situation and surgery is recommended. In patients with ascending aneurysms and symptoms, <clears throat> surgery again is recommended if an alternative explanation for those symptoms cannot be identified. In those undergoing surgical aortic valve replacement, aneurysm repair is recommended when the aorta is 4.5 centimeters or more. And then there's a wide range of diameters recommended for those with connective tissue disorders and other genetically triggered aneurysms ranging from four to five centimeters <clears throat> and the guidelines from both the European Society of Cardiology and the European Association of Cardiothoracic Surgery largely mimic those put forth by the 2010 AATS guidelines. Looking specifically at the AATS 2010 guidelines, we see a very complex algorithm for when to intervene on those with genetically mediated aneurysms and bicuspid aortic valves. As in the previous slide, there is this range of size recommendations that I've circled here, that it has an asterisk attached to it, highlighting those quote specific considerations. <clears throat> and in particular, for those patients with difficult to control hypertension, the presence of a coarctation, or a family history of an aortic event, such as rupture and dissection, surgery is recommended at a diameter between four and a half and five centimeter. Furthermore, there are recommendations for a more aggressive approach in those with Lowy's Dietz syndrome. At, in, at, in Lowy's Dietz patients, when you exceed 4.2 centimeters by transesophageal echo surgery is recommended, or approximately four and a half centimeters if the aorta is measured by CT or MRI. And finally, we see the only indexed measurement endorsed in any of the guidelines is that of an aortic area to height index of 10 or more. These patients may be considered for elective surgery, and that was in the US guidelines, uh, the 2010 AATS guidelines. In the European guidelines, Ehlers, Danlos, Lois, Dietz, and other known specific, uh, specifically mentioned connective tissue disorders are not, are not mentioned other than Marfan syndrome. However, they outline the same quote risk factors, as you see here in the middle, uh, where they're talking about Marfan syndrome patients with greater than 45 millimeters diameter. Quote risk factors again are pertaining to patients with difficult to control hypertension, coarctations, family histories. Um, but again, consistency between uh, both the European um, and the U.S. Uh, centers is, is seen here. Now, when we look at diameter, um, we used aortic diameter as a metric for when to operate, and this was espoused by the L group going back as early as 1997. And they prospectively followed 728 patients with ascending aneurysms and found that the risk of rupture, dissection, or death on the left-hand side is approximately 5.8 centimeters 
5.8% per year, excuse me, when the aortic diameter is between 4 and 4.9 centimeters. And it's approximately 8% when the aorta is between 5 and 5.9 centimeters. And it's 15.6% per year when the aortic diameter is greater than 6 centimeters. Furthermore, yearly growth was estimated at approximately 1 millimeter per year for the average aneurysm. And the risk of rupture was 27 times higher for aortas in this group, greater than 6 centimeters, than when compared to those who had aortas of 4 centimeters or less. Furthermore, they identified this hinge point at six centimeters, at which the probability of an adverse event increased dramatically. And this was published again in about 2002, again by the Yale group. And since then, based on this single study, which I think still in the bigger picture is relatively small, about 700 or so patients, 5.5 centimeters, again, slightly less than the hinge point, became the bench point diameter upon which guidelines were created. However, there are some very interesting ratios and measurements that have been examined over the last two decades. And ultimately, we may find that one or more of these numbers may be more predictive of adverse aortic events than any single diameter. Now, aortic size index is such an index. It was proposed uh, approximately 15 years ago, and it is a measurement indexing uh, the aortic size diameter of the ascending aorta divided by patient's body surface area. And the investigators found that when the ASI was greater than 4.25 centimeters per meter squared, intervention was recommended and was associated with a higher risk of adverse aortic events. Again, in a very small patient population. However, this one is skewed by variabilities in patient weight that can alter BSA and, and greatly take patients away from their ideal body surface area. So this one never really caught on very well. Um, aortic cross-sectional area to height ratio uh, was introduced to determine risk in patients with Marfan syndrome. In a paper published by Svensson and his colleagues in 2002, they looked at 21 patients with Marfan syndrome who presented with acute type A aortic dissections, a third of actually approximately a half of whom had their dissections at a diameter less than normal criterion for intervention at 5.5 centimeters. When they calculated an aortic area to height ratio greater than 10 centimeters squared per meter squared, there was a much greater risk for having an adverse aortic event. Now again, this is again severely limited by the use of basic diameter-based calculations for this aortic area. But nonetheless, this one was put forth in the guidelines as the only other one, only other measurement other than diameter at which patients could be sent for surgery, elective surgery, um, based on a metric um, that could be calculated. Uh, but this one, for some reason, has not been widely accepted, but it's certainly in the guidelines and it's worth knowing about. Aortic height index is another one out there. Uh, height, relatively speaking, is not manipulated by body surface area, weight, uh, or weight. And surgery in patients with an aortic height index of greater than 3.21 centimeters per meter is in fact recommended. However, there was no improvements in outcomes for this index when compared to the aortic size index, um, which looked to compare patients' diameters to body surface area. So then this one never caught on. Now aortic length is an interesting parameter that has recently garnished some attention. Aortic length increases with age regardless of your body surface area, regardless of the patient's height. So it's really not dependent upon body habitus, eating habits, et cetera. And as previously done for the aortic diameter, the Yale group took a close look at this and identified thresholds for intervention based on ascending aortic length. They looked at two different measurements, the classic ascending aortic length, classical, which is the distance between the sinotubular junction and the innominate artery. And they looked at extended ascending aortic length, which is the distance between the aortic annulus and the base of the innominate artery. And they did their calculations based on EAAL. <clears throat> what they found was <clears throat> with an AAL of greater than 13 centimeters, it was a five-fold higher mean yearly rate of adverse aortic events and the rate of adverse aortic events significantly declined when comparing to an AAL of less than nine centimeters. So 
they, on multivariable regression analysis, they found a 12.4 higher incidence or higher yearly risk of aortic rupture or dissection in those patients with AALs of greater than 13 centimeters. So basically they went a little lower than that and thought that surgery should be recommended when an AAL exceeded 11 centimeters. It'd be interesting to see whether this takes on any ground going forward. Again, it's a, it's a measurement that's fairly independent of, of patient factors. It may ultimately be quite interesting, but as you see this, the patient population study for this was even smaller than the original diameters. And so it's gonna take a little time to kind of sort this out. Um, finally, aortic volumetry um, is another surrogate for length and diameter. Uh, it may ultimately provide greater sensitivity, but without question, more evaluation is gonna be necessary. Now to add more fuel to the fire surrounding current guidelines, we've clearly gotten a lot better aortic root surgery. And remember the, the guidelines are based on a risk benefit analysis of surgery versus the risk of rupture or dissection. And if we could reduce the surgical risk, um, this could potentially impact the guidelines as far as at what diameter should we be intervening. Across the United States, the risk for aortic root replacement is approximately 4.3% in all comers reported to the Society of Thoracic Surgery database. However, in certain centers like ours and others with a focus on aortic disease, the results are substantially better. We examined over 1,100 patients undergoing aortic root replacement via one of three techniques, either a biological composite valve graft, a mechanical composite valve graft, or those undergoing valve sparing root replacement. The operative mortality for all comers irrespective of age or comorbidities was 0.2%. The risk of stroke was less than a percent at 0.6%. Furthermore, long-term survival was excellent with a 10-year survival for, those, for the entire cohort of approximately 93%. And for those undergoing valve sparing operations at 10 years, approximately 98% were still doing well. Now in future iterations of any society guidelines, the type of data from aortic centers of excellence is clearly going to need to be considered when determining the appropriate dimensions for intervention. Again, more will wait to be seen. Now for completeness sake, I will briefly go over the current guidelines for intervention on the descending thoracic and thoracoabdominal aorta. Now this area of the aorta is much less studied than the ascending aorta and as such, all recommendations from the two societies are class 2A level of evidence C recommendations. So for degenerative aneurysms of the descending thoracic aorta, 5.5 centimeters or more is a recommended for intervention. And if you can stent them, endovascular stenting is, should be used when appropriate. For patients with chronic dissections or genetically mediated disorders, again, greater than 5.5 centimeters is the cutoff for intervention and open repair is in fact preferred. The European guidelines are a little bit more aggressive with, res with uh, respect to an endovascular approach and they look at the overall population should have T-bar greater than 5.5 centimeters. And if sur open surgery is the only option, they think that the threshold should be greater than six centimeters. But clearly this number of 5.5 has been studied in patients with chronic dissections, particularly in genetic disorders. And 5.5 is really at the hinge point for this area where the risk of rupture, of, of rupture goes up dramatically. Um, there, is no lower, there is a lower threshold for patients with Marfan syndrome in the European guidelines, but no specific number was identified and open surgery even in their experience and their recommendations is preferred for patients with Marfan syndrome and other connective tissue disorders. So in summary, the aortic diameter remains the primary measurement upon which the need for intervention is determined. However, the predictive value of a single metric may be insufficient as upwards of 60% of all aortic adverse events may occur below guideline thresholds for surgery. An aortic cross-sectional area to height ratio greater than or equal to 10 is the only index metrics included in any of the guidelines for thoracic aortic disease and are only recommended for those with genetically triggered aneurysms. However, ongoing evaluation of additional metrics like aortic length and volume may lead to an increase in our sensitivity to predict AAEs and correlating these new measurements with specific genetic mutations may lead to changing of the guidelines for aortic intervention. Thank you. That's it, Bruno.